Now we will look at some of the research studies conducted by um, our team in IIT Bombay uh, to study how these factors uh, affect the positive outcomes. So, this study is about looking at the mindfulness aspect of yoga and how it increases moral reasoning. Moral reasoning is the basic reasoning behind any action and moral reasoning operates at six levels. All levels can be legitimate, but higher levels of moral reasoning make person more functional and more joyful and more valuating a member of the community or family. Uh, moral reasoning the lowest level is doing something to avoid harm, next to that is doing something to seek pleasure. Third level is doing something according to the group norms. Uh, fourth level is uh, choosing our action based on law of the land. Fifth level is choosing our action or thinking about or deciding on our action which are related to uh, some of the universal values of truth, beauty and goodness. Sixth or highest level of moral reasoning is uh, having a universal perspective or vantage point of thinking or doing anything. That is, that means before entertaining any thought or choosing any action, I reflect on whether everybody in this world is start doing this in this situation, in the kind of a particular situation I am in will world be a better place or not. So, there are six levels of moral reasoning, higher the level uh, more inclusive decision making uh, happens, more uh, uh, or better stakeholder management happens. Uh, our ability to manage planet, people and profit in business at the same time is also enhanced. So, higher moral reasoning has lot of uh, great uh, positive impact at the individual and the collective life, we found that with the practice of yoga, a moral level of moral reasoning increases and that happens by decreasing egocentric bias and enhancing compassion. Next study, uh, we call it can yoga make us hero, hero is as a term used for the specific purpose or in a specific way it is actually an acronym, HERO is acronym of hope, efficacy, optimism and resilience and these four variables constitute psychological capital. Psychological capital is a very important factor of positive psychology studied in the current times and psychological capital is particularly relevant at workplace. Psychological capital is found to be positively associated with the decision making, creativity. Uh, uh, our ability to solve problems, to be a more valuating member to the team. So, lot of positive impact are being found to be emanating from the psychological capital. So, it is very important to enhance our psychological capital. Yoga based practices enhance our psychological capital that happens by increasing our ego, uh, our self transcendence and increasing our subjective vitality. And psychological capital when it is enhanced, it is also reflected in the helpful or altruistic behavior. So, that also we examined and we found that yoga based practices enhance psychap by enhancing self transcendence, subjective vitality and it is reflected in the altruistic behavior. In fact, in the same study we found that it is also reflected in the academic grades. Those who were practicing yoga, they uh, scored uh, at least 7 percent better grades than their peers who were not practicing yoga. Another study, uh, we looked at yoga based practices 
on the engagement in the program. Engagement in, in MBA program or at workplace, it is hap it happens at the physical, emotional and intellectual level. Actually, this study started with our observation that as the semester progresses, students engagement come down. Uh, our hypothesis was that engagement level come down because of the energy dissipation and energy dissipation happens because MBA student have to uh, spend their energies at in many directions on placement, on academic uh, output, on assignments, on the live project, etcetera. So, uh, some people develop this tendency to multitask, they want to do multiple things at the same time. We we examined and found that those who practice yoga, they have lesser tendency to do multitasking. As a result of that, they finish one task and then they move to the next task. Yoga based practices help them to efficiently move from one task to the next. This prevents their energy dissipation. If that energy dissipation is prevented, their engagement do not drop. Uh, we did not find that in engagement increasing, but engagement did not drop as their uh, energy dissipation was prevented uh, by uh, less of multitasking. Interesting finding is that even if people have higher cognitive abilities, if they are not practicing yoga, they end up doing multitasking and end up spending more energy and end up experiencing uh, reduced engagement. But even comparatively, you have uh, lesser cognitive abilities. If you perform yoga, your energy dissipation is prevented and the decline in engagement is also prevented. So, this is a finding that was published in the journal of management. Another aspect of managing mind is karma yoga. Karma yoga means performing our action, our day to day action as it becomes a yoga. It is an intelligent way of performing action, which will leave behind no psychological traces and it facilitates self transcendence. The, there are five components of karma yoga. Manonigra means control of senses, uh, samabuddhi is equanimity of mind, uh, falasha tyak not to attach to the outcome. When we perform our action, we must identify the objective, we must work according to or for some we must identify an objective for performing any task, but we also need to recognize that attainment of the objective is not only dependent on my effort, it is dependent on many other factors. So, even if I do not achieve the desirable outcome, I do not, not feel disappointed, I must keep putting in effort to uh, attain the desirable or the dharmic or the positive objectives that is falasha tyag, swadharma is performing work according to our aptitude and according to our nature. Swadharma is when we perform something and lose track of time. Swadharma is when we naturally dispose to perform certain type of work or we are naturally uh, disposed to demonstrate certain type of intelligence. There are eight type of intelligence. Uh, uh, psychomotor intelligence, our uh, ability to work with the with our body and mind coordination, musical intelligence, logical intelligence, intrapersonal intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, etcetera. Gardner has has given that classification. So, uh, we need to look at those eight types of intelligence and identify which are the intelligence I naturally demonstrate. Uh, that is swadharma, but that is not the complete karma yoga, offering that swadharma for the world maintenance, offering this my swadharma or my aptitude to enhance harmony in the social and natural environment that is called loka sangra. So, these are the five variables we identified uh, and the scale was developed by uh, Ajinki Navare and uh, uh, Ashish Pandey. Uh, we found that when we are performing yoga, 
it has positive impact on thriving. Thriving is a psychological state in which individuals experience sense of vitality as well as learning. Uh, karma yoga also is found to be positively associated with the psychological capital. Uh, we just discussed the psychological capital in this session and we have discussed it in the earlier session as well. It prevents burnout as well. So, with the performance of karma yoga, uh, we do not experience burnout at work. So, these are some of the things which are natural outcome of yoga based practices. Work is deeply connected with our identity, work constitute uh, a great deal towards our well being and it is our mind is deeply engaged in our work. So, karma yoga is the way to perform action which can keep our mind joyful and that is reflected in thriving and psychological capital and that prevents uh, burnout. So, uh, in this session we looked at what are the different psychological mechanism through which mind is uh, regulated, through which mind can remain friendly to ourselves and to the world, which do not result into the emotional distress. You, you remember in the very beginning of the session we said that uh, our useful alertness, uh, uh, focused on the objective or trusting all these are useful things, but overuse of these capabilities or dispositions result into emotional distress, mindfulness, self regulation, subjective vitality, centering, distancing, many many mechanisms we discussed in this session they help to prevent my emotions and cognition to get dysfunctional and in this way uh, mind can remain uh, friendly to us and to the world.